I am Dr. Uh, Devjyoti Sarengi, and I am now at this moment the consulting. But here in this today's evening, I really like to talk something about the quality of the PB modules. In from the today morning, we really learn a lot about that. Make in India. We learn about that modules. The EPC, the the total power plant is not really working, and people always ask which kind of module you want to buy. Now the problem is that, uh, I don't know, I really, that always we talk about when you buy the module, what is the price? We never ask some of the other questions. And, and I really like to touch up something so that you can really understand what you really need to know when you buy the modules. The solar is really great. The last line is really very important. The earth received more energy from the sun in just one hour than the world uses in a whole year. So if there is any investor is there, really be assured that if you are right, if you really understand what you are doing, the solar really return you your money back with profit. And before really going through that, which kind of modules you need to select, just very clear, solar cells is a very simple device and this has mainly the two kinds, the mono and poly or multi, apart from the thin frames. Now you need to select which one you will be selecting uh, to install in your case. You can do either poly or mono, depending upon what really you want. But to really come, come up with that make in India, you really need to understand that the solar module making is not really so simple. Module is very simple, but before that, you have there is complete the business sector. It's coming with the polysilicon. Polysilicon is coming from the sand. So there is a one segment, one business sector, they're really making the polysilicon. Then it's coming to the crystal growth. So either crystal growth can be casting or the uh, pulling. So another sector is coming, the wafering. They really make it to slice the crystals and make it to wafer. Think about that, this wafer is around now 180 micron thick, 180. Your here is around 80 microns. Now we're coming back to the solar cell productions. And then you just integrating the solar cells and making the modules. This is also not again simple. And where you are, you are not, we are now in this situation in, in India. So we are making the modules and some of the solar. We're really lagging with the wafer. We are really lagging with the polysilicon. So to achieve this uh, 100 gigawatt, we are really far, far away. And one of the main reasons that polysilicon and wafer, where we are not do doing, because this is the energy consuming process. And it's really 600 to 60 to 100 kilowatt per kg is really required to get this polysilicon. So this is really need a lot of support from the government to do the polysilicon and wafer and also before going to the modules. If we really come back, coming back to the modules, modules, the main thing is that you see you have a glass on the top. This is the crystalline silicons and between that, there is an encapsulant. And at the side, there is a back seat. And this is with the frame and junction box. This is a very important thing. And the each and every component is very important. Now you see the module as degrading. So you need to understand when you buy the modules, the module producers give some kind of warranty. So this is they give the warranty. At the first year, module can degrade is 2%. And with every year, there is a linear degradation of 0.7%, and they can assure that after the end of the 25 years, it will be 80.7% or around 20% degradations. You really need to understand why they give this kind of degradations, why module is really degrade. It's very simple. This is the curve. There is a couple of phenomena. The first year, module degrade because of mainly one of the reason that is called light induced degradations. This light induced degradation is the property of the solar cells. It's around can be 0.5 to 5% again, depending upon the solar cell or module technology. For crystalline silicon, the mono and poly, park, there are different kind of technology. The selection of technology will tell you that how much this module degrade. And the part, the last 10 years, 
This 3% degradation because of anti-reflection coating on the glass. Anti-reflection coating will never stay a long time. Within two to three years, they will come up from the, because they are on the top of the glass. So there is a 3% degradation. The rest 20%, uh, almost 20% because of the EVA. In most of the cases, EVA is there. EVA is getting yellow. Yellowing of the EVA, that's contribute around 10%. And another is the corrosion. Corrosion is coming again from the EVA. Apart from that, there is the other kind of problem, the PID, this is one of the problem. Snail tail, this is the another problem. Junction box failure, this is the another problem. But in the standard, this is the one of the things. I can stay to tell I am completely against the EVA. Why? That will come. So to select the modules, you first really need to select which kind of solar cell technology you will be using. The solar cell technology either it's coming with the, with the crystallines, either the mono and poly. Both are having two, two kinds of technology. Aluminium BSF, that is called standard or PARC technology. Can we use the PARC and uh, a standard? PARC is really good. It's really contributing the more energy. But the problem is coming. In general, mono is having more LID than the poly. The moment poly is coming into the PARC, it is having, it has found that there is another kind of LID is coming, that is called light and elevated temperature induced degradation. So like in the field when there is a temperature and it's really coming in the more LID and still scientists don't understand why this LID coming. Some of the company like Arishi and other, they claim they're really able to solve it, but still I am doubt that polyperk try to avoid it. The LID is there. So you select the cells, that which cells you really need, that really give you the solar cells, the LID. Now we really need to think about that, the EVA. EVA, one of that, EVA will cause or contribute and make the acetic acid. So when, either with the exposure of the UV and temperatures, EVA degrades and they make the acetic acid. And this acetic acid may cause different kind of problem. One of the problem is that EVA is getting yellowing with the time. As I told that the moment it's getting yellow, so you will be losing your power. So you need to try to select the other kind of materials, the EVA free material. This is one of them. So that I can, then the boreal is some kind of poly olefin based materials. So there is a no ethyl, so that can really avoid this 10% reduction. Again thing, uh, it's coming about the corrosion. What about that corrosion? The moment the ethyl the acetic acid is coming and the ice is telling that you put it 1,000 hour damp it and if your module don't degrade below 5%, you are safe. This is one of them. We have tested, this is the one kind of uh, encapsulant where is the acetic acid free from the BPO and these are two different kind of EVA, the good quality EVA. 1,000 hour, they really falls below 5%. They pass the ice test. The moment it goes, 2000 hour damp it, you see what is the performance of them. Why really happening? You can see that with the time, this EVA will generate the acetic acid, it's here. And this acetic acid really corrodes the contacts. You are losing the power. So the message is that you really need to understand the module degradations, one of them. And I'm really very sorry to say that the module manufacturer, they are using spending for 72, sales module $72 for the solar cells and they are not really ready to spend more than more than $3 on the encapsulant. And that is the one of them on the top of the solar cells and they're really contributing this acetic acid and really uh, making your degrading the modules. Another phenomena is the PID. PID is the sun thing. And why is really happening? Because the sodium ion is coming and that is making the sun thing. Uh, it's everywhere it's getting. And it has been found that this acetic acid is really helping the sodium ion to move from the sodium to glass, sodium to solar cells, and that's really accelerating. So if you can really avoid this kind of things, and people are really spending money, people are spending money on the solar cells, they're putting capex to make some kind of technology, they're putting the oxide layer, they're mod modifying the silicon nitrogen. So 
This is another thing, uh, the centel. Centel is coming also uh, because of the acetic acid. Uh, and if there is a, any kind of uh, microcac is there, acetic acid is really um, uh, making reaction with the silver and making the nanoparticles. So before that, so I can tell, so when we really think about that, the selecting of the best quality of materials, this is one of the test is really the good test, the sequential test. You take the same modules uh, with the, the standard, the different, the like BPO, that one kind of acetic acid free, and this is the EVA, and you continue with this kind of test, cycle one, cycle two, cycle three, and cycle four, and you see at the end of the cycle four, which is around 20 years, the module is degraded and it's become 33.4, the degradation is around 33.5 percent, and it's clear and why. And if you use the acetic acid free, Encapsulant like the polyolefin based encapsulant like BPO, and it's only the 5.4 percent. So the selections of the the solar cells and selection of the below materials is really important for your module. And then if you really understand this one, and before asking for the price, if you really ask which kind of below materials I need, this kind of below materials I know, then I think it will be really good for you, and you really get the good return. Thank you very much.